Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And today, we're gonna give you guys an update about everything that's been going on here on the homestead. Okay, I'm gonna have to stand right here so that way you guys can see the garden in the background because we uh, tossed out some Bermuda grass seed to go in between the raised beds and everything and some of it is still coming up uh, some of it is filling in real nicely and so we still got a few days with it before I'm really comfortable with walking on it but we've got the Boston pickling cucumbers we got cucumbers falling out of our ears we got squash falling out of our ears uh, the beans as you can see the Kentucky wonders the Kentucky wonders have basically up and over the whole whole trellis so that's nice we have been getting from our local tree service piles upon piles of great wood chips i'm gonna show you what we're doing with that here in a minute let's walk up here to the the row bed garden and as you can see it needs to be weeded we cut down some of it but uh the pull behind tiller uh the pull string snapped on us and we got to get that replaced that happened the other day you'll see here in a second where we did one pattern and then it just cut off and we couldn't get it started back so we gotta do some mechanic work on it and uh but as you can see we started to till up this area again for fall garden and I think Robin wants to put in some other things here and there now we've also been this year well we really we started it last year and uh, we didn't really say much about it but this year we are cutting our own hay now we don't have the big fancy hay equipment like larger farms do so what we've been doing is I've been cutting it on my riding lawnmower and letting it just kick itself out then we go behind it the next day with the rake and Ladessa in the trailer where we're just basically the grass clumps we're flipping them over turning them over like they do with the big reef lakes uh, hay rakes on the bigger farms then we let it we, we do that for a couple of times and then when it's good and dry we use this thing right over here let me get over here to it this is the, the stuff that's going to be oh all of this is going to be cut next <clears throat> but we use this square manual baler right here that we uh we found the plans on the internet put it together we'll be doing a video about that later next week but the real big project that we've been working on is clearing this area now my goofball son y'all already seen him he just tucked back around behind the big pile that we made but this is gonna be where our orchard is going. And so he has made a tremendous amount of effort this week. Got a lot of it cleared out. He's basically done. See what I gotta deal with? He's 20 years old, still acts like he's 12. From the t-post there he put all those t-posts in and basically started clearing this way now it was all that thick and thicker so he's been working kind of hard right kind of hard yeah kind of hard kind of hard here's what it is and so then this area here is going to be the hay 
Have fun, son. <laughs> See, <clears throat> when you become unemployed, dad finds things for you to do. But he ha does have a job prospect with tractor supply. And to be 100% honest with you, I 100% agree with the decision that he made to leave where he was working at because if things would have kept going the way that they were going, uh, he could have been held liable for some things that wouldn't have been his fault. His basically deciding factor was, is he called his supervisor and said, call 911 that they had an inmate coding and he was doing CPR and the supervisor refused to call 911 because they didn't want the county to have to pay for an ambulance ride. So that was basically the final straw shortly after that. Like the next shift, Blaze made an appointment with the sheriff and put in his two weeks notice. Okay, so remember when I told you I'd show you what we were doing with the wood chips? Well, here it is. We cut all of the grass in this area, then we proceeded to start to mulch it. Now, I cut this grass low. I did what they called scalped it. I cut it as low as I could get it, that riding lawnmower to go, and then we came back behind it with a weed whacker and whacked it down. Theory behind it is, is to basically kill it, and then we cover it up so it doesn't get any sunlight or any moisture and stuff like that. And so we are progressively going forward. We're gonna do this lane, this lane, maybe that lane, but then we're gonna start on Robin's grapes. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the blueberries as well. Let's see, what else have we been doing? Cause it's been a while since we put out a video. All of the vines are producing great little bundles of grapes. So we're super excited about that. But we just gotta get it, all of the weeds and the privet and stuff cleared out from there. It's an ongoing, ongoing battle. I'm trying to think, what else? We still have not made any progress with the bee situation. And I'm getting a little frustrated with that. Uh, the people from the billboard companies, they they can't make a decision. Um, one time they're like, well, no, can't do it because of blah, blah, blah. And then you talk to them for a little bit. Well, if that's what you want to use it for, uh, let me check to see if I can get you some. And then you never hear back from them. And then you got to start the whole process all over again. I'm thinking about just cutting all of this down, buying tarps, laying it down, and putting the the stone and stuff on top of it and calling it done. Now, we do have a unique situation here that even for me, a guy who's the predator control guru is getting kind of stumped. I don't think it's a predator, but if you guys remember back from the very first couple of garden tours, that peach tree was loaded down. I mean loaded down now we have let me get around here one lonely peach my theory is is because we've been having consecutive storms with high wind that it's been knocking the uh, peaches off and then a certain little piggy we call him Invincipig right there now he got his nickname Invincipig because none, none of the electric fencing seems to bother him he just goes right up underneath it he don't even care it falls down, touches it back. You hear him, you hear it popping him. And he squeals, but he keeps right on going. 
So I cannot wait to eat him this winter. He's the only one that does it. But I think the wind has been knocking them down and his little fat butt has been coming over every morning and eating them. And so that's why he's all nice and plump. Really, he's all big and peachy. <clears throat> and so we've been doing that. We've been harvesting blackberries throughout the blackberry bushes that are up and around the front part of the homestead. <coughs> um, we've been working on a project in the back part of the homestead uh, that we will reveal later once we start to get some momentum to it. And I've just been practicing with my bow, uh, exercising every morning, and uh, trying to eat eat right so I can meet my goal of being 200 pounds by the HOA. <coughs> Robin did can, Robin made about, uh, I don't know, five or six jars of blackberry jam uh, from our blackberries. And uh, we just, we're making pickles, we're eating stuff out of this kitchen garden area that because that's what we're calling in the front yard now we're calling it the kitchen garden and uh so now we're just getting ready to start to make our list of things that we want to plant for the fall garden and we're getting ready to put that in okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this quick little farm tour update kind of thing that we got going on here and uh we're gonna start to get back into making the videos a little bit more regularly uh keep you guys up to date of what everything that's going on so thanks for coming by the big bear homestead god bless and have a nice day